Hello, hello everybody and welcome to the next installment in our physical material series here. This tutorial is going to be centered around glass materials. We'll be creating a basic glass material. Then we'll be going over how to properly and physically accurately tint it. And we'll also add some imperfections to it because you know, glass can get really dirty real fast. And then last but not least, we'll be showcasing how you can properly set up a liquid in your glasses. All right, cool. So let's start at the very beginning here. To set up a glass material, you can obviously leverage the really cool and useful presets that you have available to you right here. Or, you know, you can just create your glass material from complete scratch. Now to do that, let's first make sure that our metalness mode here is set to non-metal because, well, glass is a non-metal material. Then what we'll want to do is we'll want to enable refractions. So we'll go under the basic menu here and we'll just check the checkbox for those refractions to be on. Now, the material is obviously looking too rough. So then we'll want to go under the base layer here. And what you'll want to do here is you're going to want to lower the roughness so that you get your material looking like a proper high quality glass material. Now, if you're into details, well, every glass has probably a little bit of imperfections in the refractions and reflections. So maybe we could dial in the roughness to be 0.01%, just so we get that ever so slightly more realistic look going. You can then play around with the IOR value, but that obviously depends on the type of glass you're trying to recreate. For most standard glass materials, a value of 1.5 is perfectly fine. But just to offer an example, say a pure flint glass material would have an IOR value of 1.6. And you can get these values online if you just search for the IOR values for your particular glass material. There's plenty of measurements available online by awesome people who are kindly sharing them for free. Okay, but by and large, we already created a nice and realistic looking glass material here. So kudos, everybody. So now we have this glass material here. And what if we wanted to tint it? Because as you might have seen in the real world, glass can have a tint to it. So let's explore that for a minute. First thing we'll need to do is we'll need to enable volumetric scattering because that's the proper physically accurate way to go about it. So let's go under the basic menu here and let's enable volumetrics. In here, what's going to be the most important thing for us is going to be the absorption parameter. So what you want to do is you just want to set it to a color you like. In our case, we're going to go with a bit of a reddish looking color. Okay, so kind of like this. We're going to dial in the value a little bit as well. Okay, and we could add just a little bit more of a, that red color to it. And then what you want to do is you want to dial in the distance parameter. Okay, and dialing in the distance is a bit of a trial and error type of a thing. You adjust it until it looks just about right to you, okay? Now, if you've watched our translucent plastic cup tutorial, then you already know how things work here. But in case you didn't, a quick recap. With the distance parameter, we are basically defining the distance the ray travels inside our material slash object and at that distance it will be the color we set it to be with the absorption parameter if the ray travels even further than the distance that we specified here then it'll get even more and more absorbed until it eventually gets completely absorbed and then your material will start looking very dark all right and that's pretty much the gist of it that is how you tend to your glass materials in a physically accurate way not that hard is it now? All right, so then we have our tinted glass here and it looks fine and all, but it actually looks too fine. It's too clean, too perfect, if you will. And so let's introduce some imperfections to it all. Typically with glass materials, as soon as you touch them, you leave your greasy fingerprints all over them. And that's typically one of the most common imperfections that there are on glass materials. Uh, there can be dirt on them too. That's also super common, but the workflow for creating dirt imperfections is going to be pretty much the same as the one we're going to showcase here with the fingerprints. Now, the main ingredient uh, for our fingerprint setup here is going to be this pretty darn cool high resolution fingerprint riddled imperfection map. 
Now, we could just plug this map into the roughness slot of our class material. Um, that would most certainly create some nice looking imperfections because fingerprints are basically this refractive and probably a little bit rougher substance that's on our material. And this is a perfectly valid and totally cool workflow, but we will take it up a notch here. And the thinking behind our entire process here will be that fingerprints are basically their own material. And they're, uh, they're basically this fat slash grease like material. They might have slightly different IOR to them than the glass material, and they would probably have some other different properties as well. So what we'll do here is we'll add these fingerprints on top of our glass material with the help of the Corona layered material. So the fingerprints are actually going to be its own material. So let's create a layered material here. Okay. Let's apply it to our glass object. Let's drag this thing into the node material editor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create another Corona physical material. And this is actually going to be our fingerprint material. So at this point, we can unhook those fingerprints. Well, that fingerprint map from our roughness slot there. Okay. Cause we won't need it. And now what we'll do is We'll take our glass material. We're going to set it to be uh, set as a base material. Okay. And then we're going to plug this other material on top of it. Okay. Now, as a mask, we're going to be using the fingerprint imperfection map. So we're just going to plug it into the mask one slot. Okay. And there we go. We're adding some imperfections as a separate material on top of our glass material. So at this stage, the imperfections are barely visible. So what we'll want to do is we're going to want to bring in a, another shader. So we're going to bring in a Corona color correct shader, and we're going to plug the fingerprint imperfection map into the color correct input field. And then the color correct shader, we're just going to plug it into the mask one slot. So we did that because now we gain access to the curves. Okay, so with the curves, what we can do is we can just increase the contrast in our fingerprint map here just so that it stands out a little bit more. Okay, so we're just going to go for this really punchy look. We're going to make sure that the, these wider parts, these fingerprints are actually uh, really, really white. And as you can see, that immediately makes a difference on our material. But then we also still want to make sure that the darker parts, okay, are also pretty dark. They're pretty, they need to be pretty punchy. So kind of like this, because this is basically our mask, right? So we're just saying that where these wider parts are at, well, that's where this material that's sitting on top of the glass material is going to show through. Okay. So this looks like a pretty cool setup, but now we obviously still want to make sure that our fingerprint material is kind of looking like a fingerprint material would look like, not this default gray material, right? Because this is uh, looking more like dirt right now. Okay. So as we mentioned, fingerprints are basically this fat slash grease like material. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go under the basic tab. Sorry, not basic, general. And we're going to apply a water preset to uh, this material. Okay. Now we don't need volume metrics for our fingerprint material. I think that would be just a bit of an overkill to have those volumetrics in there. Um, so we can just uh, disable those, right? And then if we go under the base layer, well, fingerprints are typically just a little bit more rough. So let's up the roughness to maybe 30% or so. And you know, the IOR for fat and grease is probably not like water. It's a little bit different. We're just gonna go with a value of 1.4 here, but obviously you're encouraged to find proper real world IOR values for fat and grease if you're going for that detailed look. And so that's pretty much the way you can add imperfections on top of your glass materials. As you've seen, the workflow is pretty easy, really straightforward in so many ways. And the results, as you can see, are really realistic. With imperfections, you obviously don't want to overdo them, but it is up to you to be creative. So if you want to overdo them or if you want to make them really subtle, well, that is totally up to you and your creative vision. Okay, all right, so now we know how to add fingerprint imperfections to our glass materials. But now, how about we showcase how you add actual dirt on top of your glass? So the procedure, as you'll see, is going to be pretty much identical. We're just going to use a different imperfection map here. We're going to use this 
third imperfection map. We're going to copy the color correct shader. We're going to plug the imperfection map into it. And then we're just going to play with the brightness here a little bit just so we get a more punchy look happening. And then we're just going to plug this thing as a mask into our layered material there. Okay. Now, because dirt is not this fat slash greasy looking material, we're going to have to edit our material here a little bit as well. So we're just going to um, apply the default preset here. Okay. Uh, just so we start with a sort of a blank canvas, if you will, with a clean slate. And so with this done, we can go under the base layer and maybe we can dial in this dirt looking color. So this kind of brownish color. So kind of like this. As you can see in the interactive render, we're already getting a pretty nice result. Now we could uh, plug in a texture uh, in here as well. That would even that would look even more realistic. We could do the same for the roughness for the IOR. We could even plug in a nice little bump map in here as well. That would also look pretty nice. But you know, again, at that point, you're just being creative. You're adding uh, extra realism to your material. Uh, but as you can see, even with this kind of a simple setup, we're getting a really nice result here. Now, if you wanted to make this just a little bit more realistic, what you could also do is you could, for example, um, select just the inner parts of your glass. So we're just going to we're going to select this sort of top part here. We're going to select a edge loop here. OK, sorry, not edge loop, but polygon loop. And then we're going to uh, select uh, the fill selection tool and we're going to add that inner part of our glass to our selection. And we're just gonna store this entire polygon selection into a selection tag. Okay. So now what we can do is we can just apply this base glass material to our object. And that is the non layered glass we're applying. So without the dirt, and then we can just constrain it with the selection tag so that it is only applied on the inner part of the glass itself. In this way, we can get a dirty glass on the outside, but on the inside, the glass will be squeaky clean. And so that's just one cool technique on how you can get stuff like this done. Obviously, at this point, you could still refine the material itself. You could mess with the mapping of the material to get it mapped even better. But before you know it, you'll end up with a really nice looking, dirty on the outside, clean on the inside glass material. And the setup, again, as you've noticed, it's pretty straightforward. All right, we're really on track here. And the last thing we'd like to showcase to you here is how you can set up a liquid substance to be in this glass. Now, typically, you already have your liquid already modeled. But if you don't, well, here's a quick tip on how you can do that in a really basic and straightforward way. Just select one of the loops on the inside of the glass, sort of like this. Then take your fill selection tool and just add those inner parts to your selection. Now, all you have to do is you need to split this mesh into its own. And you can do that using the split command here. Now, once you do that, it's kind of wise to delete all of the materials off it, of this newly created object. OK, and it's also wise to give it a proper name. So we're going to call it liquid, right? liquid object, liquid mesh. All right. Then we're going to viewport solo this thing and we're going to cap it off at the top here. And we're going to do that with the help of the close polygon hole command or tool, however you want to call it. So uh, we're just going to make sure that our polygon type here is set to grid just because that's going to create a bit more of that favorable topology, if you will. So there we go. And now one really important thing to note here is that you definitely need to make sure that the normals are all aligned correctly. So we're going to select all of them here and we're going to run the align normals command. OK, and then you also need to make sure that the normals are pointing in the right direction. So right now the normals are pointing inwards into the liquid object that we've created here, but we want them to be pointing outwards. So we need to reverse them and we can easily do that by just running the reverse normals command here. OK. OK, so now we can take this pre prepared juice material we have here and we can apply it to our liquid object. OK, right. So our rendered image here is looking really bad, as you can see. And that is because we need to make sure that our liquid mesh is not perfectly intersecting the inner parts of our glass 
cup here, okay? We want to make sure that our liquid mesh is just slightly bigger. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's going to be real easy. First thing we'll have to do here, though, is we're just going to want to center the axis because right now it's not really centered. And so we're going to have to open up the axis center tool. We're just going to run it with its default settings. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to scale up the liquid mesh, the liquid object. OK, so that's pretty much all that there is to it. Just make sure that your liquid mesh, your liquid object is slightly bigger than the inner parts of the container. In our case here, the inner parts of our glass here. And that, that'll get you these cool looking, physically realistic and accurate results. Now, if you remove the dirt material so that nobody gets sick from drinking out of this glass, you can end up with a result like this one. Right. And so with that, we're concluding this tutorial and the series as a whole. We sincerely hope you've enjoyed the journey here and that you've learned something new. This series was designed to get you going with the physical material. So it was primarily aimed at the more beginner users, but we did try to sprinkle in some extra information here and there. So again, Thank you for tuning in to these. It's been a real pleasure introducing the physical material to you all. And in case you're worried we won't be doing any more physical material tutorials, well, rest assured, we most certainly will. It's just that they won't be part of this introductionary series. So keep an eye out for more tutorials. And as always, take care, everybody.